All right, hi everyone. Um, this is a crash course in how to interpret ECGs, uh, mainly meant for nurses. Uh, this is part of a new medical directive at Mount Sinai Hospital here in Toronto, uh, where nurses can order ECGs. So I thought this could be helpful. Uh, thanks to everyone here who's provided edits and feedback on this video. So as an overview, I'm gonna um, spend some time talking about the pearls, right? some high level tips, um, ECG 101, and then provide a summary. So here are the four main pearls. Uh, number one, it's always helpful to compare what you see to a prior ECG. All right, if the current ECG shows ST elevation, but ST elevation was seen a week ago or a month ago, you're a lot less worried. Uh, when interpreting results, you always want to think about the patient's baseline risk. So risk factors for uh, myocardial infarction include older age, high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, history of diabetes, smoking, and of course, a prior event. If they're telling you their current chest pain feels just like uh, when they had their heart attack five years ago, you want to take that very seriously. And if the machine says it's normal, uh, it's often right, okay? The little ECG machine is quite good at knowing um, if it's normal. So let's walk through a basic strip and talk about um, and really refresh your memory on what all this means. So first up is a P wave. You see this positive deflection and then a Q wave. Uh, thereafter, the QRS and the first positive uptick here, that's the R wave. And then you see um, a, a negative um, downturn thereafter, that's the S wave. And then we see the T wave thereafter. There's also segments to the ECG. Um, so between the P wave and the R wave, that's called the PR interval. Um, from the Q to the S, that's called the QRS interval. And then QT interval. And maybe this will also help uh, to understand, you know, what on earth the deflections um, uh, mean. So, you know, first up, we have the SA node. The SA node fires, we have a P wave. Uh, and then the time it takes from the SA node to the AV node is that PR segment. Uh, thereafter, the signal goes down into the ventricle. And as it goes down, that's a QRS. Um, and then um, after the signal has fired, there's repolarization, all right? And that is the T wave. I hope this is helpful. So um, it's really important to have an organized approach when you're reading an ECG. Um, here's one that I hope is helpful. It's called DRIP. So first up, demographics, okay? Do you have the right patient uh, in front of you? Is this the right ECG for the right patient? Uh, next, the rate and rhythm, uh, then looking for signs of ischemia, and then take a peek at an old ECG. So demographics. So again, double check. Is this the right patient? Is this today's date and time? I've made this mistake uh, too many times to count. Uh, next up, the rate and the rhythm. So is it sinus rhythm? In general, it's sinus rhythm. If you have a P wave before every QRS, and a QRS after every P wave. And then I ask myself, is it fast or is it slow? So what you can do is you can count up the QRS segments, all right? And um, this ECG was taken over a 10 second period. So you can count out maybe in this bottom lead two each QRS segment, uh, multiply it by six, and that's a heart rate. Uh, and then um, let's take it a step further. So not only is it fast or um, is it slow, we want to ask ourselves, is it regular or irregular? And a really useful tip is that um, if you have an ECG and the heart rate is above 100, for inpatients, it's almost always sinus tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. So let's show an example of each. Uh, so first up, sinus tachycardia. Um, how do we know it's sinus tachycardia? Well, we can see there are a lot of QRS segments here. Um, you can count them all up and multiply by six, and you'll realize it's well over 100 beats per minute. And then also we can see a P wave before each QRS. So this would represent sinus tachycardia. You could contrast that with sinus bradycardia. Right away, you can just see, hey, there's way less QRS intervals. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so seven times um, uh, six seconds is 42. So the heart rate is 42. And the P waves are a little bit hard to find, but with the eye of faith, you can find them before each QRS. 
Now here's an example of atrial fibrillation. So often with atrial fibrillation, the heart will be ticking uh, above 100, not always, but often. And when you look at this ECG, you can pause for a second, but it's very irregular, okay? So it's very, very irregular. And we'll see if I can um, draw on the screen here, but we sort of have a QRS and a QRS and a QRS. And then a big space and another QRS and then another big space and another QRS. And we actually can't find a P wave before um, any of these. So this is irregular. In particular, it's irregularly irregular. There's no real predictability to it and there's no P waves before it. So we would call this atrial fibrillation. Let's move on to the next slide. So um, next up, we're looking for signs of ischemia. So is there ST elevation or ST depression? Those are both signs of ischemia. Um, you can pause the screen and zoom in if you want to take a closer look exactly how you tell if there's ST elevation or ST depression. Uh, flipped T waves. So in general, inverted T waves are abnormal. Um, so here's a flipped T wave here you can see. It's upside down. Uh, you can see this normally in V1, but in other leads, it's typically abnormal. And then Q waves, this is a sign that pro there's probably been an old infarct, okay? So you can see this very deep Q wave here. Now, not all ST elevation is scary, all right? So uh, very commonly, ST elevation, I've learned, is from things other than ischemia. So left ventricular hypertrophy, a left bundle branch block, something called early repolarization, um, or if the patient has a pacemaker. And the last part of the drip mnemonic is to take a peek at an old ECG. Uh, this is the most useful tip I have, okay? Um, if today's ECG looks just like the ECG yesterday or two days ago or a month ago, um, already you're less worried. There's more advanced topics that I haven't covered here, um, uh, you know, talking about conduction abnormalities, bundle branch blocks, uh, access to the heart. I thought this was all overkill, but if you'd like uh, more videos, please leave in the comments what you'd like me to capture next. Let's summarize what we talked about. Uh, first up, it's always helpful to compare what you see to a prior ECG. When interpreting the results, consider the patient's baseline risk. If you see a normal ECG, but the patient's at very high risk and they have really bad chest pain, then we still wanna take that ECG seriously. Uh, risk factors, I've mentioned them here. If the machine says it's normal, um, then it's often right. The ECG probably is normal. And here's one approach that I've come up with, um, the drip mnemonic, um, so that you have a good approach the next time you're reading an ECG. I hope that helps a little bit over seven minutes, but again, leave any comments for how I can make this better or for future videos. Uh, thanks so much.